back, everyone. I'm your host, James Montemano, and we're live here at the Game Developers Conference, GDC, in beautiful San Francisco, California. Back with me is Ed. Ed, how's it going? How's it feel to be under these lights of it GDC? It's great. I love being here at GDC. There's so much energy here. There are a ton of people. Like, I heard like 30,000 people. It's crazy. We are in Moscone South. Yeah. And there's a North and a West. West. Is there an East? Who knows? I don't even know. I don't even know. Probably. I don't know how you could fit this many people without having an East also. Yeah. Are you, is this your first GDC or have you been to GDC oh, yeah. before? No, this is my first GDC. No. I'm, I got to tell you guys, I'm not a game developer. Oh my goodness. Why are you even here? Why am I even here? I don't actually know anything about building games. Whoops. Yeah. See, I don't even know anything about using computers. Exactly. Um, no, so I am here uh, to talk about Git because yep. people building games care about the Git uh, version control system. Yeah, essentially just version control in general. Yeah. Git's kind of the de facto. We were just talking about the Git virtual file system. That's right. GVFS. GVFS. And there's kind of a counterpart to it, which is that allows huge repos to have a virtual file system. Right. Uh, so Windows, we developed that yeah. uh, essentially for Windows, and for now anyone Windows. can use it That's on right. Windows, and we're adding some support, probably Mac, Linux down the road. So anyone can use it and integrating with partners like Bitbucket and GitHub and anyone else. Exactly. Uh, and it's a core fundamental part of Windows and the creator's update. But that's only one part of the story with Git because Git, you have a huge repo, but you might have huge files. That's right. So we wanted to bring you on not only to talk about the Git virtual file system, but to talk about Git large file support. Right. Not the large file system because right. that would be too much. This is the is it, do you say GLFS? I, 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 we call it Git LFS. Git LFS. Right. right. Okay. So yeah. Not Git VFS. That's right. Okay. It's, yeah. G I know, v there's a lot of acronyms yeah. going okay. on. All that, you know, one thing about Microsoft, we Ooh. love our acronyms. We love our acronyms. Yeah. yeah. So what is this Git large file system? Why do I care? Who's it for? Right, right. So yeah, so like GVFS scales to really, really large repos with you know, 350 gigabytes worth of files. Just yeah. huge 4,000 developers working in it. You know, that's crazy. That's not what most people actually have, especially most people building games, right? Yeah. Most people building games have some artwork, some assets that are big, but the rest of the repository is small. Yeah. So yeah, you know, you might have images, you might have audio. Um, all of these things are really big, um, it, but the rest of the repository is just code, and it's not like super humongous. Yeah, and those assets to build the game have to be in there. Right. Or because when you pull that down in a CI server, right. it needs the assets, you need to bundle it into your game. And if you're working in, you know, with models or music files, it could be ginormous. Absolutely. You know, it yeah. could be a, a substantial part of your game itself, all your textures. Oh, it probably is. Everything. Yeah. yeah. It, it's definitely more than your code. Absolutely. Yeah, your yeah. code's like this much, the file, yeah, everything yeah. else is there. Yeah. I mean, I write sloppy code, I cut and paste all the time, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. But it's still smaller. So small, it's, it's still just smaller. binary data. That's so, right. Is there a limitation with Git? Like, why, why doesn't just Git work? Why isn't that good enough? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. So Git is a distributed, uh, distributed version control system, right? So if I have a centralized version control system, um, uh, all of the code is on the server, yep. and I just download what I need, yeah. right? Maybe, uh, maybe I just get the, the most recent version, or maybe I get um, not even all of the code in my repository. You know, I could, with, uh, with Team Foundation version control, that's our centralized version control system, I can say I only want this folder, oh, okay. and I can only get the, just get the code from it, yeah. and not worry about like the, the artwork if I'm, a, if I'm a programmer. Or yeah. if I'm an artist, maybe I don't care about the source code. Yeah. So those things are really great. Git is a distributed version control system, and it doesn't have that setting. You clone the repository. So you get yeah. all of the files at, at the current version and all of the history. Got it. So when I Got when it. I clone a repository, it's really a clone. That's why it's called git clone. Yep. You get a full copy of the repository. And that's cool. That means when I'm on an airplane and I'm hacking, I can uh, I can check, I can commit stuff to my repository, but I can also roll back. Right, because I've got all the history. I can look and see what changed in a commit. I can merge branches, and I can do that all completely offline. Yep. Really, really powerful. But if you've got a copy of every image that's ever been checked in, you know, even if it's just like a one megabyte image, that's yeah. not so big unless you've made 100 copies of it or 1,000 yeah. copies of it. Now your, your repository is getting huge just because you've got this artwork in it. And also, you may have 
10 images, but if you've modified them 100 times, that's is that then 100 copies that's right. of it? That's exactly is right. That, that's how it works. That's exactly how it works. See, it's crazy. Yeah, it's totally crazy, yeah. yeah. So Git, Git doesn't work with big binaries, period. Yeah. And that's not only just big binaries, it's, you could have, so now if I have a 100 make file, yeah. One, does Git even support that? Can I check in a 100 make file? You can, and it's okay. actually not so bad. It's when you change it that it's the problem. I see. Yeah, so you make five changes, 500 meg. My artist takes a sketch file, something like that, they're, they're building assets, they're doing things, they have direct XMLs, who knows what they have. Right. Every time they modify it and check that in, a, a, basic, a clone of it, a copy of it, every single time. Every single time, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So now you can see why you know, a virtual file system is important because now you have huge assets, but now you have all this history at the same time. That's right. That's so that right. is nice. That's right. And so, so yeah. Get, a, get GVFS, the Git Virtual File System, um, is is one way you could tackle that problem. But again, you know, as we were just saying, it's it's new. Yeah. Uh, it only works on Windows right now. You know, we're making that support. But the the Git community also has another way to to deal with these problems, and that's Git LFS. Right, so that's, what what is it? Why and what is that now? Right. So. Basically, it's it's just another way uh, to avoid downloading the files that you don't need. So okay. when I uh, if I add a file using Git LFS, yeah, instead of putting the file into my Git repository, it puts a little stub file talking about where that file can exist. And then when I push my repository, it'll just push that you know tiny little stub file into my Git repository. And my data, my images, my artwork, uh, gets shared onto, you know, Azure or S3 or some some other place. That's my, not my actually server part sitting of, over here. Yeah. 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 So it's some, something that's not part of the Git repository. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So when I Git clone it, I don't have to download all of the history. I can only bring that in as I need it. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. So I can be, I have my artist comes along or my you know sound person. Hey, hey, we have all these. Like all these MP3s, all these waves, where you want them. Yeah. And you could today check them directly into Git. That's right. But you're saying with Git large file support, I'm actually taking those files and putting it somewhere else. That's exactly right. And it could be in a few different places. Yeah. So do, you wanna, it... do you want to take a look? Yeah, let's take a look and let's yeah. just go and demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for, first, let me show you what this looks like. I've got this repository. It's got some large files in it. Okay. Not, they're not even that large. They're like one megabyte. Here, let me, let me clone it. Actually, you know. Let's, let's just scroll up through history, because... I like history. Yeah, because I, I don't remember. So this is a, a repository that's in Visual Studio Team Services. You can okay. tell by the visualstudio.com. Yep. And it's called Large Files. No. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it. It's so, usually what I call most of my Git repositories, just large, large files. Yeah. Large, large app. Large app, yeah. Large app, it's a good name. I think so, too. Yeah. It's very descriptive. And so this is downloading here at... Seven megabytes per second yeah. uh, over Wi-Fi, and, and now we're at 65, 71, and we have only 83 of... Uh, yeah, so this is going to take a while. So these aren't even that big. These are just one megabyte files. Like you were saying, I just got a lot of them in history. I see. Uh, I've got about 1,000 of them, uh, it turns out, and that's so what you don't have So you don't have 2,000 files. Right. You have... I have history of the, yes, exactly. Times. Yeah, I've only the, like if I just checked out the most recent version, I've only got ten files. They're each one megabyte. Okay, it's not that big. It's not that big. Yeah. So this, this, this is this is bad for me, new developer. Comes in, I'm like, I don't have that much, but now I'm, we yeah. could just sit here for the next half an hour and watch you clone this repo. I thought that's what we were gonna do. Oh, uh, I mean, that was yeah. that was the demo. That was the demo. Did it right. All so right. no. So I, I'll hit Control C. We'll okay. stop it because All this right. is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Nobody's going to want to wait. No one for wants this. that. So I've got the same repository, and I added these files with Git LFS. Okay. Uh, and I just changed the name of the repo just a little bit, you know, like you do. Large app dash LFS, large files dash LFS, and I'll clone it now. And again, I'll get the fancy Visual Studio Team Services logo, and it's already done. Wow. There we go. So that that filtering content. Uh, that's actually downloading from uh, the, the actual LFS storage location. So receiving objects, I still got 2,000 objects. Yeah. It's just that they were all those tiny little stub files. Ah, but I still just use git clone. Just use git clone, because I've got git LFS installed. Git LFS is smart enough uh, to actually, let's, let's take a look at this repository. Um, so what git LFS does, I'm sorry, I'm going to nerd out on you for just a second. Nerd out, I'm ready. Yeah, so this is the git attributes file, yep. and that's how you can Explain configure. Explain a git attributes file for some people that, you know, newer to git. You know, it's funny. There's a lot of things in git 
you know, that are out there. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, there, there are a ton. Git is a, a complex system. Yep. I actually just wrote a blog post about the Git attributes file. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can find it on my blog at oh, well. edwardthompson.com. Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Git attributes file basically controls how Git manages some of the files. So okay. what, I, what this is, is start.png, all of my PNG files, they're going to use LFS. And they, that's just basically the, the configuration that you use. It's actually super simple. You don't have to know how this file works. You can run git LFS track, start.png, or start.jpg, for instance. Yep. And what it'll do is it'll set up this git attributes file for you. Boom. So you don't even have to know anything about it. Git LFS does it all for you. And once you've got that installed, once you've got Git LFS installed, you can just clone the repository and boom, LFS will take over. Now what if I've already had that history in there? Right. Like what, I mean, the first repo had all that history. Can you do some magical conversion? You can do some magical conversion, um, but you have to, and this gets scary, you have to rewrite history. Got to rewrite that history. You got to okay. rewrite history. But there are tools out there that'll let you do that. So that's um, like if you accidentally check one in. So you really want to be cognizant ahead of time. Hey, I'm about to add this big thing. You know, I have this big MP3 or right. all these big PNGs or big assets. Right. Now, how does it know though where to put that file? Like, are you still then committing PNGs? Uh, so, this? so yeah. So what what happens is if I have a PNG, let, yeah. you know, I, I don't. But let, let me let me pretend I have a PNG. Okay. We'll call it we'll call it food.png. Oh my god! How do you get out of this? Oh, oh yeah. Oh my Are you not a VI guy? No. Where's my? Oh, oh my goodness. I uh. Oh, we're stuck. scary. We're stuck. We've you, lost the. Oh, no, I'm just all right. Well, we'll go ahead. We'll. What, what did you? Oh my goodness. Oh, I know. Uh, it's you, magic. He magically went to Google, searched how to exit Vim, and then boom. Through the magic of television, we cut all we of cut that all out. cut all of it out live. Right, right. Yeah, our, our producer's amazing. True story. She is. But uh, yeah, so no, I'm actually an old Unix guy. I happen okay. to know how to use VI. Sure. It's right. kind of baked What did you just do? What is this VI foo? Yeah, so I've, I've, got a, I've got a file called foo.ping. It's not He's actually it a magic. ping, right? It's actually a text file, okay. but. It uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, because. Uh, it's that startup PNG, it's that wildcard that's important. So when I add this, this will actually go into the large file service. Well, so let's I run make it status now. Yeah, it's right there. It's a new file, right? What's this? Well, that's that's VI. That's VI leaving oh, okay. its mark. Oh, okay. Right? Just because you can get out of it doesn't mean <laughs> it's really gone. I see. Right? So that's actually just a temporary file. Oh, okay, so no big so that wasn't any I wanted to make sure it wasn't yeah. any magical That's LFS. Right. Stuff. Yeah, we could let, let, let's do it with Notepad then. Okay. Open up. We couldn't just create a paint file, huh? Couldn't do that. I don't know, dude. You're the artist, not me. Yeah, paint. Uh, I got paint on. Uh, All right, it's fine. All right, it's fine. Right, it's fine. Well, right, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. So we'll save that. All right. If I run git status now, it sees that I've got that new file bar.png. Yep. I know it's hard to read because it's red. Um, but I don't have any other, no, nothing else. If I get at okay. it, yeah. You got so, stuff. Cool. So really to me, it's kind of transparent that totally. now I'm tracking in LFS. That's right, it's totally transparent. You don't have to worry about this at all once you've got that Git attribute set up, once you've run Git uh, LFS track the first got time. It. You know, I can just okay. Git commit and boom. Good. Really super simple. But what it's actually put in the repository is not the PNGs. It's just a little pointer file that, that shows how to find it. A little stub. It's like, a little hey, stub. yeah. Got it. It's it's like, I don't know. It's like a hundred bytes or something. It's yeah, tiny. It's tiny. And so when I get push, what'll actually happen is it will upload those those PNGs into uh, in this instance. Uh, it will push into uh, Visual Studio Team Services, and that'll be hosted in Azure Blob Storage. Ah, so you're going to use some Blob Storage yeah. to host everything. That's right. Now, if you mod, so all right, so you had to configure this on VSTS. Then is that where the enabling is, or how does that work? All the enabling is in running that Git LFS track. Ah. That's it. It's totally client side. So Visual Studio Team Services supports it out of the box. As soon as you start pushing a repository, it knows how to handle that. Oh, I see. And it's, you know, it's not just VSTS. This is like an open source, open platform extension to Git. So VSTS supports it, TFS supports it on-premises. Um, it goes into SQL Blob Store instead of Azure Blob Makes Store. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, but also GitHub supports it. Oh, cool. Bitbucket supports it. Nice. Yeah, so everybody supports it. Okay. Yeah. So no matter where I'm hosting my code, it's going to work. If I had my own server, it'd be something I install, essentially. That's yeah, a little trickier. Okay. Because uh, the extension really kind of does 
depend on the hosting provider. So, oh, I see. so we built ours to support uh, Azure Blob Storage and SQL Blob Storage. Oh, GitHub, uh, I think they push into S3. Okay. Bitbucket, I actually don't know what they do. I've never worked at Bitbucket. Something, it's yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Got it. Now, if you make changes to those files, are there going to be two copies of it then? Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. In in uh, Azure Blob Storage. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and so it's super efficient because I don't have to download um, all of that stuff at once. I just download the because you know I've, I've only got. You got these. I, I've but just those got these. Aren't actually the images. They are. They are the images. Yeah. So when I get cloned, it Git was smart enough to go download them from, so uh, I can. Uh, so it's not on demand. It just here's my local copy. Yeah. I guess I don't know how to open a ping from the command line. Uh, you need to do, I don't know. Uh, I don't either. Oh, you, hey, that'll did work. Did I do it? So. It. Yeah. Magic. So it's the Git logo. We're learning command lines we as we go. That's right. I always got, it's hard, to, I got to switch from terminal into command. And, yeah, see, I'm, like I said, I'm a Unix guy. I know how to get out of VI, but I don't know how to launch yeah. paint from the Windows command line, right? So this is the Git logo, right? Yeah. And it's a ping, and it was downloaded automatically when we ran oh. Git clone. But only the latest version. Only the latest version, right. That's what's important. So, uh, and that's one thing that's cool. Um, so Git LFS you, you, is optional, right? Yeah. There are other ways to do this. You don't have to. Um, use LFS, you could have uh, done what's called a sparse checkout or a sparse clone. So you can uh, clone just the most recent version. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's fundamentally kind of the same. Yeah. You only download those 10 one megabyte files instead of downloading all of history. Got it. Okay. The problem is, Git sparse checkouts are kind of flaky, right? Yeah. So since you don't have all of history, you don't have branches, you don't have all of the branches. So, um, so you wouldn't be able to switch branches and have it do anything. Yeah. Git LFS, all that, since it stores just those tiny, that tiny file, those yeah. you can you can clone the entire history, and so you get branches. So I've got, I, I can check out a branch really easily. Yeah, because you're on master now, you're going to check out old branch. Check out old branch, and what Git LFS is going to do, it's automatically going to download just the files that changed. So it's actually really efficient. Um, and it's, so this, Here's so a problem. if you only change one image and it already has nine yeah. images that were never changed, it's only going to download that one image. That's exactly what happens. Interesting. That's exactly what happens. So it's okay. one, yeah, it, it's, it's really efficient. Got and it. The, so one of the problems is that Git LFS 2.0 has some major speed improvements, and that's what I'm running here. I see. So it used to be that this took long enough to download, you know, those files that uh, that I could yeah. I could say, oh, here's what it's doing. It's downloading the file. But boom, it just boom, happened, right? Yeah. So that that line filtering content, that's that's actually uh, downloading from the server. So it's yeah. super efficient. I got to get a slower connection to do my demo next yeah. time. Um, you have a metered connection. Yeah, exactly. Well, so does that mean, what if I'm on an airplane and I don't have internet? Well, is, there the, is that the trade-off? That is the trade-off, yeah. I mean, so Git LFS has a cache directory oh, okay. on, my, on my local system. So I can switch back and forth between, so if I switch back to master, it doesn't have to download anything oh. anymore. Oh, OK. So I can go back and forth. I just oh. can't download content that I don't have yet. That makes sense. Yeah. So if I'm branching, I'm doing stuff, I already have everything, no big deal. I no can create deal. new branches. Absolutely. Can modify anything, and then once I get back online, I'm good to go. That's right. That's yeah. right. I can even commit. If I run git commit, it'll store that image in my local cache directory, uh -huh. and it'll just wait until I run git push. OK. Yeah. So I can even do development of images on an airplane in git with and, git LFS. And you're good. And you're totally you're good. good. So if I'm using Git today, I can just turn it on. You can just turn it on, yeah. And it's in, is it in mainline Git then? No, so uh, you need to download Git LFS yourself, unless you're okay. using Git for Windows. And that's yep. why I'm demoing it here, because it comes as part of the Git for Windows installer. Oh, I see. Yes, so super straightforward if you're on Windows. If you're not, um, you know, if you're on a Mac, I think you can homebrew install it. I don't, okay. I don't know. Um, otherwise, you can just download it. It's, it's a really simple app, so you know, it's very straightforward. Um, supported on Mac, Linux, Windows. And then no matter else. where I'm developing, if I'm storing it in GitHub or Bitbucket or VSTS, doesn't matter that? Doesn't matter, yeah. Okay. That's right, that's right. When did this all come about? Who, who created it? Like, Actually, it what's was... What's the background? Yeah, so um, there, there were a couple of competing, if you will, uh, technologies uh, around this. They were all very similar, right? They plug into Git in the same way. Git has an extension system, um, and they all use the same, kind of the same kind. Um, Git LFS uh, came out, 
I think uh, 2016, okay. um, GitHub launched it and added support onto github.com that was, that was very good. Uh, and so um, that was really the, the, the point at which everybody in the industry was like, okay, we've, we finally got a standard. Yeah. So everybody adopted Git LFS kind of at the same time. We did, um, Atlassian did, and Bitbucket right after we saw that GitHub um, had, had adopted Git LFS. Yeah. And so we worked together. You know, um, Atlassian has made changes to Git LFS, Microsoft has made changes to Git LFS. So it, it is an open source, open standard, and yeah. we're all uh, benefiting from that. That makes sense. That's really yeah. nice. So it's, it really solves a problem, which is not only just, hey, I have these big files, but I have all these flavors and different versions of it right. and as I'm going, and things get more complex, it's good to go. So why would a game developer, I think, what's the pitch to any game developer today that's out there building games to use it? Yeah. And how do they get started with it? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, you know, so I don't do a ton of, of game development, but you know, even just getting started with the Unity sample app, right? There's a ton of binaries. There's a ton of artwork in there. Yeah. And so if you, and that's fine. You can get commit a big binary file once. And there's no real penalty. It's when you start making changes and adding history to it that that really gets expensive. Um, so I think that's the, the, the big benefit. And it's, yeah, it's super easy to get started. Just download, get LFS, run get LFS track, boom. And that all the instructions are right on the website. Okay. Um, and it's very, you know, very straightforward. It's seamless, right? Uh, we, we, we hardly even knew it was there. Just using Git. Just using Git. Yeah. Just using Git. Yeah, so I think it's, it's an incredibly powerful tool for game developers especially. Now, we talked earlier about Git, what a Git virtual file system. That's right. And that's nice because I only need to download things on demand. Now, right. this is downloading things on demand when I get clone, only a recent version. But what if I never need those PNGs ever because cool. I'm working on code? Can you combine these two worlds together? Is there a need for that? So I don't, I don't know that there is. I feel like, uh, so you can't actually. Because I'm just saying, like what if I you know, have a gig yeah. of assets that are in master? Right, right, and you're only touching a couple of them? In that case, I would say uh, GVFS is the way to go. Okay. Uh, so they don't work together. I, I won't bore you with the details. Okay. I won't, yeah. So it's one or the it's other technical. today. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Uh, so it's one or the other today. Um, and, you know, so the, the, the sort of mastermind behind GVFS, I've talked to him about this, and he's like, I think we could theoretically make this work, right? You know, you, you know how really yeah. smart people are like, yeah, oh, just, you know, no put problem. it on, spike it really quick. That's we'll just right. get it done next week. That's right. No. Um, so he, he totally thinks that it's possible. But we, we, we sort of step, take a step back and we look at it and we're like, Do, does anybody really need this? Because GBFS solves a lot of those problems about getting data on demand. Okay. So I, we'll see what happens. Uh, at some point, I think that you know his crazy mastermind impulses will take over and he'll have to add it. Yeah. But uh, until then, uh, you get one or the other. So how do I pick? How do I know which one to go for? Right. So Tell if you me. have help me. Uh, on, so if you have Windows or if you have Linux right now. Get LFS, right. yeah. no question. GVFS doesn't support uh, uh, Mac or Linux yet. It's only Windows. Got it. So, so that's a no-brainer. Um, but realistically, uh, if you if you have a code and art, probably Get LFS is the the smart choice. Okay. Um, it's it's just better supported out of the box, and you probably don't have a giant repository, right? G GVFS solves the giant repo problem. Got it. Um, but uh, GitLFS solves the large file problem. This, okay, so I'm going to unveil this in James's Brainium Cranium here. Do it. It's also to the point here that with GitLFS, I'm never really committing those huge files into my Git repository. That's exactly right. They're in some other central area that I could get to even if I didn't want to clone everything. Someone says, give me a copy of it. It's there. It, no, you wouldn't theory, do it. In, in theory. theory, it's there. But yeah. you'd have to know those, that you have to know that S three bucket yeah. number or the Azure Blob but, bucket number. But, but I think that's important because they're not actually there. That's they're right. somewhere else on demand. That's right. But and transparent to you. Transparent to you. And with GVFS, that's not true. With GVFS, they're actually in your Git repository. Got it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we're teaching Git how to scale with very large bits of data. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, it's we're not we're not done yet. Yeah. So Git LFS, getting them out of the repository is a huge help. Got it. Um, and you know, so I think you asked, how do you, uh, how do you get started? You know, what happens if you've already committed some of these large files? Yeah. Yeah. You, so I, I said you have to rewrite history, but um, thankfully there is a tool that can help you. 
It's called the BFG Repo Cleaner. Okay. Uh, and basically one of its modes is, you know, open a Git repository, you click a button, and it rewrites all your history. I like easy buttons. I know, and it just puts all of the all of the big files that you know. I think you can tune the threshold. It'll put all the big files into Git LFS for you. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So then oh. you can just push back up, delete your old branches. Nice. Boom! All that data is gone. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now then, I'm thinking, is there extra costs associated with this then, or how does that work if based on what I'm using? Well, that that depends okay. on your provider. Um, okay. so what about with VSTS? With VSTS, no, there's no extra cost. Okay. Yeah, we we we'd like you to use it if, pro if it makes sense for you. Yeah. Um, because you know, we don't want you to spend all your time cloning. Yeah. Uh, but no, we, we don't have an additional cost. I can't speak for everybody. Okay. Um, you know, some people actually encourage you to use LFS because, um, you know, maybe it makes their lives easier when they're running the server. Yeah, less bandwidth. Every, yeah. You're cloning, you're downloading stuff every single time. Exactly. So yeah. so at least some providers will will force you, if you try to push up a, a large file, it'll just shut you down. Okay. It'll say, no, you can't do this. You need to install, you need to set up Git LFS instead. Got it. Yeah. So if you already have a Git repo, check out Git LFS, especially for those large assets. You can rewrite history, because who doesn't love to rewrite history? <laughs> we have the power to do so. It's just like quitting VI. It's <laughs> exactly. so much fun. We have the power somehow to figure out how to exit VI. I love it. Right. Google knows. All right, Ed, thank you so much for coming on. Not thank only just, you. you know, the virtual file system, LFS support, all this stuff is awesome, really scaling Git for real production games and applications. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, stay tuned for even more live from GDC right here in the Azure booth.